morning. Good morning from the Black Sluice. The blustery Black Sluice. Also known as the South 40 foot drain. It was renamed by the, I've forgotten who, somebody <laughs> renamed it recently to the Black Sluice Navigation. But originally it was known as the South 40 foot drain. There's also a North 40 foot drain. Last night I was reading Michael Fax about the South 40 foot drain and the Black Sluice Navigation, and he's obviously retained them all. This is the Black Sluice Navigation. <laughs> <laughs> Joe was emphatically reading them out to me as I was falling asleep, so no, I don't remember them all. I think me reading them out made you fall asleep. Yeah. Yeah, there was quite a bit of work over many, many, well, centuries to try and figure out how to... Drain the land and make it suitable for farming. Yeah, drain the fens, recover the land, make it so that it wasn't always just flooded on the tides. And they've accomplished that. And they improved and Joe's it. Joe's going off camera even further. <laughs> they improved it quite a few times over the years, made it wider. Yeah. Put in a lock, took a lock away, put in the lock again. But it's called the South 40 foot drain, though it's wider than 40 feet. So go figure. Well, it was made wider. Well, it's nice of them to have done that. It's wider all the way down to Donington Bridge, which is where we made it last night. The end of the navigation, where there's a very exciting turnaround. In the wind. In the wind. It's really windy today. Yeah, speaking of the wind, we probably should just get going now. Okay. We're going to go that way. It's 7 o'clock in the morning. It's not even 7 o'clock It's early. It's early. And we're trying to beat the weather. It's windy Clearly now. we haven't beaten half the weather. Well, no, it's always going to be windy. We're trying to beat the rain. Yeah, we're trying to beat the rain. So, there's my hat doing its thing. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's lovely down here when it's not windy and rainy, we assume. Well, it actually, I mean, there's these, it's a great green corridor, lovely, you know, rural off to the one side all the way, ro railway on the right couple of bridges then you turn down a section towards the uh, the Donington bridge and and that is all just green corridor there's cows off to the side there's all sorts of waterfowl oh my god the swans are annoying yeah, yeah. <laughs> the swans can't quite figure out this whole idea of linear <laughs> they're just like the ones on the um, <laughs> and, the, and things. they clearly don't take off very often because quite a few of them are having real problems where they were like they were taking off and then they were they were like you know, landing. Yeah, but not. They were they were very cl clumsily landing. Like they were having some real problems. So we probably they were invading. Them out this quite is bad. their area. They're not used to. We should have left them alone. Big old steel narrowboats coming along. Yeah. Oh well. Poor birds. Anyway, let's go. Yeah, we're on our way. the drain at least. Once we get to the lock we have to wait for the tide so we've got no choice of when we go there which will be in the rain. <laughs> um, but yeah we're up early to try and avoid the rain on the on the black sloops. Um, I felt a few drops already um, just because it's not raining yet and made it not really cold. Um, it's supposed to be spring. Come on winter coat.
If you've seen our last vlog, you'll have heard all about the Black Sluice Navigation, or South 40 Foot Drain as it's also called. If you haven't seen it yet, it might be worth watching it before you continue with this one, as this isn't your average British canal. Currently about 12 miles of the South 40 Foot Drain are navigable, and if you like being the only boat around, it's a good navigation to visit. Yesterday we went all the way to the Donington High Bridge, and today we need to transit back along the river with them to return to Boston, ready for our trip across the wash in a few days time. We had hoped to pull over here so I could run into the bakery at the little supermarket for some breakfast. There are no mooring signs here, but the lock keeper had said it would be okay for us to stop to visit the shop. The problem is that it's far too shallow for us to get close enough to the bank for me to get off the boat. So after a little bit of shuffling backwards and forwards, we give up and continue to the lock, still hungry. As we approach the lock in Boston, things start to feel a lot more urban. After the disappointment of not being able to visit Lidl, we're sad to find that our plan B is not an option either. The Black Sluice Cafe doesn't open till 9am, so it looks like it's going to be a homemade breakfast for us today while we wait for the lock keeper and the tide. Breakfast is eaten and the tide's coming in, so it's time for us to head into the lock. Next to the lock is the Black Sluice pumping station. The building was flooded in 2013 and three of the five pumps were damaged. At the time, the cost of repairs was estimated to be between 15 and 20 million pounds. Since then, the floodwaters have been managed by using the Black Sluice as a gravity sluice, and apparently this has worked really well during the heavy rains in recent years. So the pumps were formally decommissioned in 2018, and it's unclear yet what's to become of the building. When the tide reaches the right level, the lock keeper opens the huge steel doors for us and we can ride the tide back up to the Grand Sluice. After 12 miles each way on the drains, it's pretty exciting to be back on the river with all the varied sights and sounds of this urban navigation.
We're cruising on a rising tide and as you can see the water is much lower than when we came down at high tide yesterday. As you can also see we're moving pretty fast with the assistance of the tide. If you bring your narrowboat down to Boston but don't fancy crossing the wash, I would definitely recommend a trip down to the Black Sluice, as this section of river is fascinating and it's very short if you don't like tidal navigations. Even George is enjoying it. This poor boat has seen better days, still it's a fascinating sight nonetheless. As we around the corner and approach the Grand Sluice, the lockkeeper spots us and gets the doors open. Once inside the lock we have about a half hour wait while the tidal water rises up to meet the level of the non-tidal water. Just enough time for Michael to rescue a pigeon. I'm sorry, it's not my fault. What happened? Well, we, we got a pigeon. It was in the water. It fell in the water. We couldn't swim and uh, it ground in there so we backed up and, and then caught it and put it into a box. And, uh, yeah, so we got a live pigeon. Now what do we do? George is not impressed. Well, effectively, we just need to let it dry out and then bring it back up here. And, uh, I mean, depending on how long she's been in the water, it's a good chance she'll die.
We're back in Boston. These posts, that one there, those are beginning to look really familiar. Like we keep coming back and... I think this is the fourth or fifth or something time we've been back here. Let me think it through. We came in once, we moved up there. And back. Maud Foster. It was, it was once over here, then Maud Foster, then back. Okay. And we did the engine stuff in. Then we went to... Get Diesel. Diesel. We didn't vlog back. That. No, we didn't go to get these diesel. We went to get the parts, the oil. Yeah. So There's only three times. And then we left and came back. So this is the fourth time. Okay. All right. Anyway, that was my favorite. That's how long it takes to figure these things out. That was my favorite trip so far. Yeah. I mean. Not least of which because of the pigeon. Yesterday when we arrived at, um, what was that lock called? Black Seuss Lock. Black Seuss Lock. The lock keeper, the very friendly, helpful lock keeper, asked us to fish a bollard out that someone had thrown in, like that belonged to the lock. So yesterday I fished a massive plastic, heavy, water-soaked bollard, waterlogged bollard out of the lock. Today, coming back, Michael has to beat me. He fish pulls a pigeon out of the lock. To be fair, she pointed out the pigeon. <laughs> I, I just, I just reacted to the pigeon. Was couldn't like, pigeons can't swim apparently. It was just trying to flap around and yeah it must have just fallen in right off the lock gate as we came in because it was still in the water relatively strongly pushing itself about but its wings were just completely sodden so now we have a pigeon in our bathroom yeah in a box in the bathroom drying out um yeah good fun but um yeah that was not a, for the pigeon no yeah. that was a really good trip like i think on a warmer spring day it might be a little bit more pleasant but um yeah, it was it was different. It was quiet. There was no other boats there, obviously. Yeah, um, it was fantastic. Well, it's funny because like the stretch down from the Grand Sluice to the Boston oh, it's just Black brilliant. Sluice Lock are is is just really cool because yeah. it like curves through Boston and you go through areas where there's a bunch of um, fishing boats. Yeah, because yesterday some when we wrecks went, and yesterday when we went down, the water was quite high. Yeah, but today it was much lower, so kind yeah, of you get a bit big of feel of the mud. Yeah, yeah, different perspective, but and it happened so fast. So we'll be we riding the tide up today. Yeah, yeah. Not that it was moving very fast. Uh, but um, that's why we spent you know thirty five minutes in there <laughs> waiting because the rock was not really moving. The, the, the tide was not arriving so fast that we had to worry about. It. But um, if you're gonna like. Oh, come to Boston because it's a really good trip down the river with them. But then if you get to Boston, just do that little extra bit down to the Black Sluice because it's so much fun. Yeah, yeah. There is, unfortunately, the EEA runs on its own system, so there's a fee. Yeah, but I think um, you can get day licenses or week licenses. You can, yeah. You can get short-term licenses, but you have to have an EEA license. And with the EEA license, you can buy... Um, in some places it says deposit, but it isn't a deposit. There's no sort of rental scheme. You buy one of these uh, nav keys, which is an EA key that you use, um, well, effectively on all of the EA waterways, all of the EA we... statutory waterways. Yeah, the East Anglian one. Yeah, so for, it'll be useful for us for the River Neen and for the River Ooze, Great Ooze, um, and the Nen for the people who are on that part of the of the system. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so... So there is a little bit of an expense to doing it, but it's worth it. it yeah, it's the the. I don't know that I'd bother going all the way to, the end of navigation. The Donington Bridge, no, but there's yeah. there's various moorings along, so you could have like easily a few days down there, just yeah. having a real quiet and there's just time so in the middle of nowhere. Wildlife, yeah, like like the, from the sort of grebe. I'm not sure what they were because they were too far away, but they're like a, a, a definitely. You know, diving waterfowl look like a grebe um, to the long beaked um, <coughs> wimble like birds. Right. I'm still not sure. Like, they look like shore wading wimbles <laughs> from California. Um, there's raptors. You know, I could see, like, oh, there's just so much in terms of bird watching, especially. And you're likely to be one of the only boats down there, probably the only boat down there. Yeah. And once you get kind of out of past the first bridge you're pretty much in the middle of nowhere it was just so nice hmm. yeah yeah it's it's funny because it, it boston and this portion of the rhythm and the black sluice don't get a lot of traffic and they don't get a lot of respect like a lot of people don't really realize how wonderful they are we got this sort of word of mouth thing where people who have never actually been here but have heard yeah. from someone else that it's not <laughs> worth going say it's not worth going but the reality is it's worth going and we've pretty much had um 
wet weather the whole time we've been here and we've loved it. So. Yeah. Come. Yeah. I got to admit, I wouldn't mind seeing it with a little bit more sun and a little bit less wind. So hopefully that's going to be the case next week when we head out of Boston for the last time and head over to King's Lynn. Yeah. So thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, subscribe to Minimalist Maximal Velocity if you want our time lapse videos, and click that bell if you want to get blown in the ear by the wind for navigations.